Um, I started playing, I believe, at the age of nine, around nine. Uh, my mom's first husband, his name was Carl. He pretty much uh, put the ball in my hand. And at first, I think at first, like I didn't really want to play. I don't know what I was, I was more, I was like a weird kid. I was into like climbing trees and like doing weird stuff like that. And I just started practicing and they put me on a AAU team. This is when I was living in Maryland and it's just been going on since then. Well, I think I realized that I, did, uh, that I, that I love basketball at a, at a young age. Um, I don't necessarily remember when, it was probably when I was like younger, maybe like 10 or 11, because you know, uh, the AAU team I was on was called Edgewood Lady Rams, and we were a very, very competitive team. So uh, of course it was my first time playing, you know, I'm only nine. So back then I wasn't as good as, you know, as I am now, but I always wanted to be better. And I, and you know, I definitely didn't want to ride the bench. So uh, I guess I just content, I just practiced like, you know, my basic skills at that age, like shooting layups, stuff like that. And I just realized that, you know, I really love this sport and it's really something I can do. And I just pursued it from there on out. I feel like when I came to Texas, that's when I developed the mental aspect of the game. At the time, Coach Downing was here and, and he took a chance on me. My recruit was in December. So my senior year, it was in December and we came to a game and then I uh, hung out with the team and then I went home maybe like a two, three weeks later I signed and he, you know, he left and Tilwell came in and Chris King called me first and he told me that they were still going to honor my scholarship and uh, Tilwell called me shortly after that. Shante Goff initially met her in the spring of 2013. She had signed here previously but it would look like that she was not going to be able to get in academically with certain courses required with NCAA. So I went to Coppers Cove and did a little investigation and and found out she had some other courses that would be fine. And then we got her to take a course in the summer and she made an A in that course and she uh, qualified by, I think it was like one or two tenths of a point by NCAA standards. And the rest is history because she's come on this campus and applied herself. She's got focused on the court and in the uh, academic arena and she carries like a 3.2 GPA and is gonna graduate in communications and what an outstanding uh, example and what an outstanding leader and uh, role model for our program. Tilo, he's a very, you know, he's a very cool guy, humble guy. He's very successful. And when I learned more about him, that's when I started to respect him even more from a distance, even not knowing him, respecting him before I got here because I'm just like, man, like he's been to nine NCAA tournaments, you know, he's won this many games, he's helped so many people. And I knew that I knew at that age that I wanted to go overseas. So I'm just like, you know, he could help me do this. And that's when I was really, you know, buying into what he was trying to do. After three games, I decided that Shantae was gonna be a starter as a freshman. And I probably said to myself, why did I not start her for the first three games? And she has started every game for me for four years, except she's missed a few games because of injuries. But her freshman year, you could tell she was something special. She's been a captain for me since she was a sophomore. And you just gotta appreciate the fact that when we play, she brings it every game. We played a tough schedule. You know, we played Texas, we played Baylor, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Year in, year out, we're gonna play Big 12 SEC schools, Conference USA schools, Mountain West schools. I mean, we, we take them all on in our non-conference schedule. And during her four years of non-conference play, we're 32 and 30 as a program. And we've set all kinds of records, probably now over 100 different program records since she's been here. And we've had back-to-back -back winning seasons for the first time in so we've said a lot of things, you know, record-wise, but the main thing, we've gone to the WBI postseason, Women's Basketball Invitational. We've gone to the WNIT, the Women's National Invitational Tournament. We finished second in the WAC two years. We've been in the championship game two years in a row. Played in front of over a million people each time, but we haven't made it to the NCAA Tournament, and that's, uh, that's our main goal, is we want to play in the NCAA Tournament. And what a way to cap off a great career for Shantae, who was the WAC Player of the Year last year, and is certainly playing at a very high level right now. My first points, and that in in the first game against Shrine, I, I was just playing, you know, like I said, to get off the bench, to, to stay off the bench, and then. Uh, 
when I was close to a thousand, I didn't know. My parents were like, hey, you know, you're about to, you know, certain X amount of games, you have a thousand points. And I was like, oh really? And I went and looked, I was like, you know, I wasn't even counting. When I broke the record, that was when we played Abilene. I didn't really feel anything. My first shot was a miss. And then I think I missed it twice. And then the third time I made it. And I don't know, I guess I was already in the mindset, like, you know, I want to win, I want to win. So I wasn't really thinking about, oh, I just broke the scoring record. You know, of course, my mom was at that game. So she had it on video, like, oh, that's history. Blah, blah. The game's not going to stop because I broke the, the record. You know, I got to get back on defense, keep playing defense. Unfortunately, we lost that game. But um, that was the, just the feeling that I had that, you know, no one cares that I just broke the scoring record. People are going to care about the win. Well, the main thing I, I encourage her to do is, is work hard, get to the rim, go to the line, you're going to be rewarded. But I always encourage her, shoot it. I always encourage her to get down and dig down and be the best defensive player we have. And she's going to be in the top 10 in steals. I encourage her to rebound. She's already in the top 10 in the entire program history for rebounding. I encourage her to get it to the rim to score. She's the program's leading scorer, but she's also got to the free throw line more than anyone. She's gonna be in the top five and assist. And uh, I just encourage her to be herself, let the game come to you, but I want you, I want you being the Energizer Bunny out there, and she does a lot of that for us. My mom always says, like, sometimes you have to go through things to receive your blessing or to receive your breakthrough. And when times get hard, don't let it define who you, you, you know, you can either, you can either put your head down and say, you know, I tried or I quit or, or you can keep going, you know, life happens, things don't always go the way that you want to go and you can't let that, that negative uh, spirit define you. You always, to me, you always have to go on with a positive outlook. Well, one thing I miss about her, her not being here is once she can score and she can play, I'm going to have to, 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 to fill that void because she's going to leave a big void for us in a lot of different areas. And I'll also miss her family. Also gonna, I like the fact that she loves to play the game.